As Adam Silver said, this is more about off the court than anything on the court. We want to make sure John Morant's in a good place, is surrounded by good people. There's a reason this wasn't a larger suspension, because they'd never win if it came down to an arbitrator deciding right. what's right because you get down to where laws broken, they weren't, mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. of that nature. My gut is that there's an agreement between 15 and 20 when it's all said and done, and they reduce it a little bit. But I think it's very clear the message has been sent. We are concerned about you. Right. We know how good a ball player you are. We are truly concerned about you. Now, you can't right. pay lip service to that. Just suspending him doesn't get him help at all. So I would think part of the suspension is also going to be finding a veteran, as you've talked about in the show a lot, whether it's a retired guy or a guy late in his career like a Haslam in Miami, like a Mike Conley you spoke about, to be there to just be a big brother, right? Right. Yeah. right. I, I, you know, I think that um, I don't know, you know, if it was fair of 25, 20 games, 30 games, whatever, but I do don't know this. Uh, he is going to miss – that um, Big Max now. It's going to cost them over cost, $50 million. Yeah, it's going to cost them over $15, yeah. 30, 50 million dollars. And um, I think that's what the uh, NBA uh, wanted to make him understand. It's not It's not just the 25 games. It's the 25 games, and you're not going to be able to place it the 65 game minimum. Right. And then, you, then you're not going to be first team, second team, third team, all NBA, no MVP, no all-star. So it goes back to when he missed the eight games. They said, look, he can't be on any, t any one, two, right. three teams either. So he's going to miss that cash. That, that, that cash, too. So, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of things that, that, that's concerning. But the main thing is getting him help. That's the main thing. I was talking to a friend of mine, Arnie Duncan, uh, former United States Secretary of uh, Education for the Obama administration. He Ooh. told me to learn and heal. <laughs> Wow. Gee, wow. Yeah. Well, Maybe should be in real time with those who have yeah. been victims of gun violence themselves or who have lost loved ones to gun violence. And that, I think, his glorification of guns will fade away quickly. Right. And when I, was telling, when I was talking to him about that, I said, I'm going to use that, if you don't mind, on, sure. on the Carlton Show because he is right. You know, he needs to go and visit the victims of gun violence and talk to them so they can make him understand the glorification is not what you think it is. Right. This is this is something real serious, and and, and you know, and we are victims of it, and we are trying to um, you know stop gun violence in America. So you know, I, I, I this is much more than than um, than the money, much more than the games. It's about getting them help, and I hope he goes to counseling and get the help that he needs and come back right. You want to jump into that? Uh, you know what? I really thought his suspension was going to be worse. I thought it was going to be after the All-Star break, 40 World Games, or whatever the case may be. Some people were even pushing for him to be suspended for the whole season. Right. So I think he got lucky with the 25 games, but that's a lot of bread we're talking. Yeah. 50 yeah. million not being able to get that max contract, everything that he's been working Super hard max. for. Super max. Yeah, it's over 50 and, uh, million bucks. I think moving forward, he understands the severity of, of his actions and, and, and what he's done and the people that he's hurt. Uh, me, me going through uh, a similar, not, not a similar situation. You know, uh, there are a lot of people that help you get to where you got to. Sure. And you know, a lot of people are let down and hurt uh, seeing him doing what he's doing to himself. So uh, I, I believe he'll learn from this and understand what road he's going down and what picture he's painting for himself publicly, and I believe he'll grow from it. Yeah, you also, as we've all experienced in our lives, yeah. you'll know real quick who your friends are, who oh, your real no, friends absolutely. are. Because yeah, uh, when you get in trouble, especially publicly, yeah. a lot of people you thought they were in your corner, suddenly the gravy yeah. train's over, they are no they longer in that corner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, you're not pointing at my no, quarterback. Oh, yeah. oh, don't oh, point at my quarterback. We're not talking about him today. No, no, no. I didn't say he was fading No, no, you pointed at my quarterback. I'm not talking about him. I like this. How did he become your quarterback? You just got here. You don't even know this guy. Fax, don't start me. It's Monday. Don't start me now, Fax. Don't start with me. It's Juneteenth. Just right, Juneteenth. <laughs> you can't answer that one. Right. Come on. That's our fact. Yes. What are we going to say to that? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> exactly right. All right. Headline number three. Uh, Stefan Diggs. We've got the, well, I at least found out what's cooking in Buffalo. And now it all makes sense to me. We thought he was just a prima donna wide receiver like the guy two to my left who just Negative. wants the ball. Negative. I, I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm 7-11. I'm always open, coach. No. I get it. But here's the deal. 
Uh, this is what it comes down to. I know there, there are reports out there that it's about his use in the offense. He was the second most targeted wide receiver in football behind Devontae Adams. That's not what it is. Losing sucks, obviously. He was upset about losing to Cincinnati, but here's what went down. The Buffalo Bills were restructuring contracts. Josh Allen restructured his deal. Von Miller restructured his deal. They went to uh, Stefan back in March and said, we'd like you to restructure your deal and turn some of the money into an immediate bonus, blah, blah, blah. And he sat down with them and he said, I'm happy to restructure, but why am I restructuring? Who are you going to get? And part of the conversation they had was that if Stefan Diggs agreed to restructure, they would go after DeAndre Hopkins. Ooh. So he said, all right, I'll take it your word. I'll restructure my deal. They didn't get DeAndre Hopkins. Now, theoretically, they still could. He hasn't it's signed good, anywhere. Okay. Right. But that's what this is about. Uh, when they talked about miscommunication and we need to do a better job about that, it's not about him getting the ball more. Every wide receiver wants the ball more. Well, it's that you told me if I restructured, you would go get DeAndre Hopkins. You lied to me. And well, that's the problem. Well, I've, I've had a lot of people in organizations lie to me. The Baltimore Ravens told me, told me they were taking me with the fifth pick in the 2000 draft. They did not. They, they drafted Jamal Lewis. But Stephon Diggs, if, if – we have to understand that as wide receivers, we don't have that leverage and that authority that quarterbacks have. So he shouldn't be surprised that he restructured, he restructured his contract and they didn't get D-Hop. It's just now he's visiting the, the New England Patriots, who is the arch rival, and they may not get D-Hop. And, right. and now he may be facing them on the other side. But I think he's getting older. The window's closing on him to win a championship. He wants to get some help on the other side to get that double team off of him. Yep. And uh, I mean, it makes sense. What, what, it makes what, a lot of I, sense. And if you were, if you could put yourself in his shoes for a minute, yeah. and you probably can, if you look a uh, general manager in the eye and say, "I'll do it because you're promising me you're going to go get this guy," and they don't, would you be in your feelings on that? Uh, would that yes, bother you? Yes and no, because it's a business. They are going to take what he said, basically use it against them, create more money in a salary cap. And maybe they're not going to get the uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Maybe they feel that he's not a good fit. But that is what the uh, De- that's what uh, Stephon Diggs, wants, Diggs right. wants personally. They right. don't care what you want personally. Well, they want to make the best and best investment for the team. He did convert six point seven million dollars of the twenty three salary into a buy, uh, bonus, which opened up just over five million bucks for the Bills. But no DeAndre Hopkins. Nope. Not yet. No DeAndre Hopkins. Not yet. Hopkins. Not yet. Not no yet. Not yet. Uh, he hasn't signed. He hasn't signed. Don't look yet. like he signed in New England because that was a two-day trip. Right. And they didn't sign him before he left. You know. So who knows what's going on there. Let's give you one more headline before we take a break. This is more for...